Hi everyone, we're Michelle and David and welcome to the Explore Us channel. It's David from Explore Oz here, developer of the Traveller app. I'm just wanting to talk to you today about places uh, and how some of the new updates and features of places in the version 7 app. Before we start, I'd just like to discuss this little panel down here on the, my display that you can see is a development tool. It's for my purposes. I can use it in this tutorial video to simulate moving along the road and going on and offline. Uh, you'll not see this in your versions at home. So let's look at places. Uh, what are places? Places are waypoints and currently within the Explorers Traveller app you have access to, uh, looking at this system, around about 90,000 places uh, loaded into the system. Um, they're visible on the map as the little icons uh, that pop up when you have the places layer turned on on the map and these are basically all of the places or the waypoints on the system. <clears throat> Couple of the new features of version seven. Obviously, when we open one of these places, it's always been the same. Simple tap on the icon will show you some information about the place. You can see that my uh, cursor's gone to a big green pointer. That's basically that this entire section now is now the show button. We don't have a show button anymore. Um, you basically click on the entire white square to go into show. While I'm on here, there's some other controls. There's edit. This is the new folder control and a route control, which we'll discuss shortly. On the left, we've got distance to that marker from our current position, the direction of travel, and using track up mode as I do, uh, which is indicated by this particular arrow type over here. Uh, if I'm using a track up mode, this particular position, as I'm heading down, down the road here, you can see my arrow, I'm, I'm pointing sort of southeast. Uh, the direction that I need to travel is to my right to get to this particular camp from where I currently am and that this place has a has a photo loaded in it. We also have the list, uh, obviously the list view of the places and inside here we have the Explorers places which are all of the public places. You have your personal places which are uh, place records that you can create for yourself um, to either do waypoint navigational markers or other points of interest that you might need. A recent places list and an address search which I'll discuss shortly. You'll also see on the places list that we've got access to the same information. If you're on a widescreen device, if you're on a smaller mobile phone, some of this may be chopped off, but it certainly is there. Distance to that location, direction of travel, uh, and whether they have photos or not. If, you're, if you are moving, these numbers are dynamic. So if we just trigger our simulator down here and move, you'll see that my little pointer just triggered there a change. Uh, as I was moving down the street, you can see the little arrow is just jutting a little bit and the distance is changing. That happens on this list and on the full, on, on this particular pop-up and on the full list uh, as you're moving around the system. So let's go and have a look at a particular place and we'll select this Lake Gedna camp in Tasmania <clears throat> as our start point. You just saw there a message that talked about loading the photos. The system now supports offline photos. As you visit and view any of the photos on the system, they are stored locally on your device and are visible offline as you're traveling around. Obviously we can add photos. I'm not going to discuss that right now. We've got on the left hand side, we have a what we now call the mini map and our content section on the right. If you're on a smaller device, you may find the mini map is at the top of the screen and the content section is underneath it. Basically, it all looks the same, all the same content and information is available no matter what size device or what device type you are using. So across here, we've got the type of place, the icon for this particular place and some of the features that are at this, or some of the supported facilities at this place, the address, uh, the current position I'm using UTM today. Um, you could be degrees, whatever you need. The same information about the direction, the time and that Again, it's dynamic, it will be adjusting as you're moving or getting closer to it. So you can actually see it get counting down as you get closer. Sun and moon time. So we're showing you the time zone and also the sun and the moon rise and set times. <laughs> Across the top here, we've got some tabs to control information about Lake Gairdner Camp. So if we go to nearby, we'll have a look at the places that are nearby Lake Gairdner Camp. 
And what's happened in here is all the map uh, on the map on the left hand side, mini map has reset its scale to uh, showing you each of those places that's on this list uh, in the view on the left. At the moment, we're seeing all places within 10 kilometers of Lake Gairdner Camp. One of the other things I do need to mention is that with inside any list in the Explorer Traveler app, every, every element has a left swipe action. By activating these left swipe actions, you reveal more information or more actions that you can take on any of the elements that are on the screen. That happens whether it's a place trek or track log or any other uh, list based system there's always going to be a left swipe action in this particular one. We've got edit, we've got information panel, which is basically the full place page for Moana. We've got a folders option and a route option. <laughs> Remember left swipe, it's used extensively throughout the app. Whilst we've got this display on here, if we click on any of these particular places or tap as it would be on a smaller device, you'll again see that we've now popped up a little map within the left hand side mini map window that's showing the photos and it shows uh, a few bit the basic description as phone, web and email access details. It allows you to quickly plan uh, or look ahead, uh, you know, from one particular place to another particular place on the system. These photos again have downloaded into the offline database. They can individually be popped up, swipe through each of those photos and see what's going on in that particular area. One of the great new features of the version 7 system are our new filtering systems and our, this particular radius distance system. So while we're still at Lake Gedner Camp, if I click on or tap the all places message there, we come up with our new place filters. We've got predefined filters and we've got selective filters. There's a couple of things about the filters controls that we have on the system. This little button over here on the right, this text wide button, if I, if I press that now, you'll see that we've actually also now added the textual descriptions for each of the icon types that is on the map. This is uh, stored in your, in your system. So if you turn that on, it will stay turned on. I'll just leave it on for the scope of this demonstration. Uh, obviously it can be turned off if you once you understand the icon sets and you can get a little bit more on the screen it's exactly the same as if you're selecting features you can either just get the features list that's available or you can see the features with their text and set i'll leave this on for now we've created some predefined filters that really helps makes it quick and easy to move around if we just quickly tap on the where to stay so while we're in lake gardner uh, i would expect you know, that we wouldn't actually see Lake Gairdner as a nearby place because it is the place that we're at. And it's highlighted down here with the flashing uh, little icon underneath it. So it's only found one um, where to stay location near us here uh, within 10 kilometers of this particular camp. But over here on the right hand side, we've got a distance marker. Now I noticed this doesn't actually appear on the video uh, when I open this up. In this selection list down here, it has 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 50 kilometers, and 100 kilometers. I'm just going to select the 20 kilometer mark now. So I've got places where to stay near Lake Gardner within 20 kilometers. It's given me uh, a, a little bit more of a list of some more places, including some caravan parks and features like that. Just to uh, add a little bit more to the filtering system, if I decide that I just want to say, I just want to see caravan parks near me. Uh, I can turn on caravan parks. If I wanted to be a little bit more selective, I could say, oh, give me caravan parks that are pets allowed. And we can apply that filter <coughs> and we'll see all the caravan parks uh, that are within our, that are close to us that support uh, pets. This one selected a 50 kilometer zone because it didn't find any with inside the 10 or 20. So it's gone up to the 50. You'll see the closest one's 26.1 kilometers away. If I expand that out to 100 kilometers, you'll see a, a much greater list of caravan parks that are pet friendly within 100 kilometers of Lake Gardner Camp. They're all visible on the map. Uh, you can click on any of them and you can get to see some more information uh, about that particular place. So there's the place filters. It's quite powerful. You have lots of control in here. You can turn on and off anything you like. The feature selection list, is dynamically generated based on your place type. So if I said caravan park, and we know that we could do dog friendly in there, um, 
if I do caravan parks and say lakes, rivers and creeks as a filter, my features has now been turned off because there's no sub features of lake, river and creek that I could select to make this filter system work. Turn that one off, go back to camps, turn on all of the camp places and the features that are available are features that are available in all of those particular places. Okay, so let's just uh, clear out, our, let's just uh, go back to things to do um, as just as another search. And so we've picked up a dial range walking track, which is 34 kilometers away from Lake Gardner. It's up here on the top of the screen. Those place filters quite functional and very powerful. Let me just clear that out so that we can get back to our default list. Again, every one of those elements has the swipe. The next tab along is the nearby treks. And you'll see that near us uh, where we are, we've got this Devonport to Cradle Valley within 10 kilometers, 2.4 kilometers away. Now the measurements of nearby treks is based on from our position, which is here on the map, to the nearest point on the line. It doesn't necessarily take you to the start point or the end point. It's the closest distance from you to the line is what we're showing here. Again, if we extend the range up of this, I'm just going to go to 50 kilometers and it's picked up another trek. If I go to 100 kilometers, it's picked up some more treks that are available that are near Lake Gairdner Camp within 100 kilometers. Similar to the places, we can filter treks and I could say, oh, just show me the four wheel drive ones and it will just show me uh, within 10 kilometers there isn't any. I'll just send it back up to 100. It's found. <coughs> the Montezuma Falls and Ring River and Climbs Track, which are four wheel drive specific ones. If we just said, show me ones that are two wheel drive specific, it will change the result set and we'll be able to see the ones that are two wheel drive accessible. So again, you can select filters and make this quite comprehensive. Again, Treks also have a swipe action um, to help you along. The last tab that we've got in the Trek system, uh, the, in the places is the comment system. Comments now includes private notes. We can enter private notes in here. These are stored in your account, visible only to you. You can make comments. You could put in here, you know, make booking. I know this is not relevant because you wouldn't make the booking necessarily for this particular place, but make booking, you know, before I go. And we'll leave that particular note in the system. The public reviews and comment system, as we've had it before, you can optionally rate and place a comment here. This is visible for anybody else to look at um, moving forward. I probably should have selected a place that had comments, but uh, I didn't. You'll notice that when I type this, um, make the booking before you go, the actual comment icon up here, it actually went from an outline to solid fill. If I just take that text away, and wait for the one, you see how it's cleared out? Now that's telling me that there's a note in there or not a personal note in there. So when I'm on this information panel, I can see that it's still dark colored. So it's got some content in there that I've created. Okay, so the other buttons that are available to us. Uh, this is available for all places in the system. Public places or the Explorers places are now editable by everybody. So if you uh, see changes or want to change it, you have the option to do an edit now. And you'll see this countdown timer at the top and it's reinforced at the bottom. This is a countdown timer uh, for this particular place. Uh, a, a public place edit actually happens in a slightly different way than a personal place edit. The information is extracted from the server right when you press that edit button and it's displaying you the latest version from the server. As you change this content, it's then delivered straight back to the server. So there's no uh, missing, uh, you know, you can't get record locks with two people trying to edit the same thing at once. That's what this timer does. You do need to submit the update before that timer runs out. Otherwise, you won't be able to submit it. <clears throat> Within the edit place panel, obviously, we can do the description, the name, the address, phone, web, email, and other bits and pieces that we have. We can switch the data source if it's available to be changed. Um, we can't obviously change this to personal. It's a public record. There's no changes detected, so there's nothing to say. Similar to how the place type filters work, when you're selecting a place type, you can obviously go through the list of all the place types to make the change. Uh, I don't need to change this particular place, it's correct, but you have the option to do that. 
and you can then obviously come in and address the sub features of this place as well if there was something missing like it did allow campfires or whatever you can turn that particular one on and apply that change i'm not going to make any changes to this record at this stage that's place editing you can do that for public explorers places and your personal places the explorers places must be done when you're online only and you, the edit button up there uh, will not be visible if you go offline the next one along is the version history information or the updates manager it shows you the changes that have happened to this record uh, over the years and time um, for each update that's done so you can check who did what when and, and make sure that it's all correct the next one is the sharing option you would use this to share this place uh, to somebody else either using the app or not using the app once you press this on your device you'll be asked whether you want to share it to email or other contact types and you'll be able to select it the next one along is a new one this is folders uh, folders is the new feature in version 7 uh, i'm not going to go thoroughly through folders um, needless to say i don't have a folder on this account yet and this particular item is not in a folder as, as you can see it's a black square if i click on it i'm given the option to add a folder and just come in here and i'll create a folder and i'll just call it um, places video and click that now you'll see that my folder is filled and that my place is in a places video folder I'll show you where that folder is shown up in, a, in just one second. You'll see it right in a second. The other option that we've got is move. We now allow you to move uh, any record. You can just pick it up, drag it, drag it place to any new location that you need and hit save. I'm going to hit cancel because I don't particularly want to move this place. And the last but not least is the route button. This allows you to create a route to this particular place in one step simple straight navigation to there from where i am if i hit begin it'll do a driving plan or i could make that a walking plan uh, or whatever i need i can accept that detail and i can then start my journey we added the a couple of things we did do we added a note to this particular place and we put it in a folder if we just have a quick look at the places list again you'll see now that our lake gardener camp has a filled in in this case now a green marker and that's to talk about that comment that we added before and that's one of our personal notes if we go back to our data manager menu on the right hand side you'll see that we have my folders now as we created one and in this folder this folder called places video there's one place it's called lake care in the camp and you'll see again the same thing with the swipe there's the one item on the left hand mini map inside folders you can add any trek place track log or other element of data on our system and you'll be able to group them all by a folder it's a great place to put all your travel notes and information i'll be explaining more about folders shortly uh, in another tutorial so that's uh, a quick run through on version 7 places uh, i don't think there's much else that i need to show you if you enjoyed this video make sure you subscribe thanks for using explorers traveler and we look forward to seeing you on our next video